Okay, the screen's starting to act up. I hope this is going to work. In the last increment, this is where we left off. The page prior to it is year 177. Okay. And that's the name of the section if you're using the HTM that you want to search on. The year 177. Paul is making this, and I haven't figured it all out yet. Paul is making a parallel to the year that David became king of Hebron. Because if you add 1078 and then another 1070, well, 1077, if you add the 1077 twice, then you get to the end of the scheduled millennium at 5250 from Adam. That's where Paul is going with his numbers. That's why he's using 78 sevens. He's making a play on the 1078 syllables that Isaiah was using in Isaiah 53, but Isaiah leaves two significant sections in ellipses that Daniel in his meter plays on. So Paul is playing on both Daniel and Isaiah when he comes up with these 78 sevens for his anaphora. His anaphora meter sums up with Eudokian plus an, a Pinon meter together, sums up 78 sevens. And for two years now, I've been trying to figure out why. Okay, now I've got more of the puzzle, but not all of it. Just maybe you'll figure it out if you see this. So before the Bible time distance table, which was here, the page just before that is the 1077s, which Paul is paralleling. Okay, and he, and, and that relationship is David's Hebron kingship, was, which was 3096 from Adam. Okay. That Hebron kingship was 1050 from Abraham. See, look. See, David's king of Hebron, 1050 from the year that Abraham reaches age 100. All right. That's what Paul is making a play on. That's another 1050. That one I had found. Okay, but I'm still not sure why he's playing to the Hebron kingship and now suddenly switches to Isaiah's 1078 meter. Isaiah's 1078 meter chronicles the number of years, literally you were supposed to count them, from the birth of David to the death of the last David. All Israel knew to count that. This is what they were taught. And Paul is basically recapping it in Greek using Hebrew meter of Ephesians to Greeks based on the whole pattern of Ephesians is based on a play by Euripides called Ion. He's tracking that play chapter by chapter. What he's doing is, of course, his whole theme is Ephesians 2, the merging of the two walls, Israel and church. Church has its own deal, its own covenant. Okay, the Old Testament is set aside, which Book of Hebrews, of course, will explain. And Paul is showing how they interrelate to fulfill the promise to the Jews by means of church. So that's why he's using all this Hebraic, um, all these Hebraic concepts. You know, because that's what he said in Romans. Ephesians is written after Romans. He told the Romans in Romans 11, listen, you can get cut out just like the Jews were. You got grafted in just like they got grafted into the land of Israel, replacing the Canaanites. Don't get smug about it. And of course, that's true. You know, if you've been listening to my God Deeds video audios, I, part seven talks about that Satan's angling for a mistrial based on the same arguments he used in Job. If church is too apostate, we die too soon. And yeah, it's the rapture and God will keep his word and all that, but then Satan wins. Satan's trying to get out of jail. You would too if you were him. I mean, you know. So church can actually, the rapture can occur at the wrong time. That's what Satan's trying to make happen. He tried to make Passover, the crucifixion happen at the wrong time. And he almost, he almost won. But he didn't quite win, so now he's trying to do that with church. Okay, so what's the relationship of the Hebron kingship with its 1077s to the temple, to David, and to Christ, and to Abram. Well, to Abram, the Hebron kingship is 1050 years later. Abram matures, 
okay, in 2046 from Adam, and in 3096 from Adam, 1050 years later, David is crowned at Hebron. Okay, so that would have been temple year 1017. All right. I mean, well, 1077 from his Hebron kingship would have been temple year 17, 1017, because the temple was started 13 years after David died. Okay, now down here there's a little math error. Okay, this is three years later from 4043. 4143, that was when Christ was scheduled to die. That would have been Temple Year 990. I have to fix that in the document. It's obviously wrong. Okay. The date we want is also not listed here. It's between the two. The temple would have been a thousand years old in 2050, in 4056, 4156 from Adam. Three years later, 4159 is when the temple would have been 1003. Okay, and that math is correct, so the rest of this is okay. But Paul is basically linking this year here. Okay, because... Okay, look. 4173 minus 1077 is 3096, the year David was crowned in Hebron. That's the actual year he was crowned. Paul's linking a, 20, a, a 1077 to that, which is 1078 when you, you know, are using sevening factors, because it's the beginning of the 1078th year. This is really sophisticated, I'm sorry. Okay, David crowned Hebron 3096 from Adam's fall, plus 1077, is 4173 when the Lord should, should have died. I mean, not should have died, when he should have been 70. Okay, you got that? That's when the Lord should have been age 70, 4173 from Adam. That would have been temple year 1017. Okay, then look at this, 4173, look at the calculator again, I'm waving it here. Okay, you add another 1077, and that takes you to 5250, which was supposed to be the end of the millennium and the beginning of eternity. All right? So I'll leave you to ponder that here. Um, just sort of look at the screen, absorb it, and then I'll come right back.